Rabbi Kurt Schneider, it's great to have you here on Charisma News. And this time you are in your home uh, and you're not having uh, air raid sirens going on behind you, interrupting our uh, our interview. And thank God that you were protected and spared uh, during that time. And that was, a, that was a bit scary for me because I didn't know what was going on. But I know, brother, you had a lot more peace than I did at that point, I think. But uh, today we're going to be talking about what is God speaking about 2024. But in a way, kind of leading up to that, we're going to talk about something that God spoke to you in July of 2023. And so, Rabbi, welcome here to Charisma News. Brother, God bless you, John. Always good to connect and glad to be part of the Charisma team. Today, we're talking about some prophetic things that God is speaking. And uh, before we get into what God is saying to you about the year 2024, um, I, I want to play something that you just shared with me. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a short. And so we're just going to play this, but this was from, I believe July 7th that God July spoke 7th, to you yep. and you mm-hmm. shared this. And so we're going to play this and then we'll talk about it. Turn to the book of Esther. And I heard the Lord, not with, in my mind, but in my intuition say to me, this is what's coming next. The world is going to start pinpointing scriptures like the one that you just read where it says the Jews did whatever they wanted to with their enemies, and they're going to use scriptures like that to foster and booster anti-Semitism. They're going to start focusing on Jews bombing just, uh, places in, uh, the, uh, the, in, in, on their borders where they're being bombed and attacked to protect themselves, but they're not going to show the Jewish people protecting themselves. The media is going to show the Jewish people bombing places to protect themselves where children are getting hurt, hurt because you can't always, you, sometimes it just happens in war, and the world is going to turn against the Jews once again. The world is getting ready, beloved, for the biggest anti-Semitic attack against Jewish people that the world has ever known. Wow. Wow. That was July 7th that you released that word. And this is what God was stirring in your heart about that point. And now we see October 7th. So that was July, August, September, October. So four months later, pretty much to the day that we've seen the start of, of that come to pass. So let's just respond to that. I mean, you, you sent this to me and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to talk about this because you, there was something in your spirit that was stirring already. And now we see this. Tell me about your perspective of this word now. What happened was a few days before July 7th, I was sitting uh, in my uh, prayer room at home one morning. I was just uh, did, do, doing my daily readings. And a lot of times I just say, Lord, is there anything in, you know, in the word that you want to show me? And I just open up the word. And I open up the word and I just turned to the book of Ac- Esther. And I looked down, I started reading the book of Esther in the ninth chapter, the fifth verse. And it says there that the Jews did whatever they wanted to do with their enemies. The, uh, mm. There was a plot to exterminate them, and the Jews responded to that by, by, by uh, eliminating their enemy, by, by doing whatever they wanted to to their enemy. God gave them victory over the ones that were trying to exterminate them. And as soon as I read that, it was like I just knew. Mm. That was about to happen again. People can verify this by going to my YouTube channel. Just go to Rabbi Schneider. Look at my YouTube that was released on July 7th. It's either the thumbnail or the title is called The Anchor is Gone. Mm. And about 16 minutes into that video, you can see that uh, being prophesied and you'll be able to see the date on that. So it was, and the reason I went into the studio to record on July 7th is because I knew that the Lord had given me a prophetic word. Yeah. And so to kind of of break that down, uh, there was a couple things that I just knew in my spirit. Number one, that Israel was about to be at war Mm. and that they were going to be painted as a big, ugly bully and that the world was going to put them in such a negative light through the media that the world would turn on them. And anti-Semitism wouldn't just be confined to one part of the world like it was during the war with them during the time of Nazi Germany, but the Mm -hmm. whole world. I said it would be bigger, a bigger anti-Semitic attack than it was during Nazi Germany. And I also prophesied that the big assault, I I prophesied that uh, the way this anti-Semitic attack was going to happen is because of the media. The media was going to be showing the world the Jewish people responding to the attack that had been Mm -hmm. upon them by bombing places that had children in it. 
And of course, mm -hmm. that's exactly what's happened with the hospitals right. and, and everything else. And, uh, and, and, I, and I also uh, saw there that um, the result of this, once again, would be that the, through, through the media's demonic uh, um, um, energy, that the world would turn on Jewish people once again, and it would be a worldwide anti-Semitism mm -hmm. that, would, that would evolve from it. You know, Rabbi, as we're getting ready for 2024, Israel is still at war. I mean, that's it, we're recording this um, mm -hmm. in November 17th right now. So it's mm -hmm. um, uh, October, November. So it's more than a month. It's a month and 10 days at this point since that since that initial attack. Um, what do you, what is God saying about this war and what is God saying about the year 2024? Well, to answer the question, I want to go back just a little bit. I remember yes, I was at, I was I was at a, a one of the one of the studios, uh, the one of my, one of the te television networks that we broadcast through has a very nice studio. I was there probably four years ago, and I was uh, doing some uh, filming with them. And uh, in during the break time, one of the uh, one of the executives there came back where Cynthia and I were sitting, and they just said to me, "You know, you know how you doing?" I just started crying. Mm. And the reason I started crying was because about that time, I really started feeling the climate shifting in the spiritual atmosphere, particularly in America, but around the world. In other words, it, it was the beginning of when I felt the, the, the Western world was becoming unchristian mm. and that opportunities were being taken away from Christian voices to be able to get the word out. And I just saw doors closing. Although we've never been a 100% Christian country, for sure. Right. It was at least based on Christian morals. And I just felt that that Christian emphasis in the Western world was getting smaller and smaller. And mm -hmm. so when he asked me how I was doing and I began to cry, it was because I was feeling that grief and that grieving in my heart as I felt the darkness beginning to move over the face of the land. So when we get to 2024 now, what am I seeing in 2024? I'm seeing the same thing. And I don't want to be a pessimist because I don't believe that we can walk uh, with the Lord the way he wants us to be united with him in, in, in being overwhelmed or in defeat. But on the other hand, we have to face reality and we have to connect with him in the present reality, which requires more grace. You know, the Bible says where sin abounds, Grace abounds all the more. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like a greater grace is needed and will be needed in the inner man of God's people to be able to transcend and ascend the winds of darkness that we're presently facing and which will continue to face in the earth even more fiercely. And so mm -hmm. as we get into 2024, I can talk more about that, but that's a general opening comment. Yeah. Well, Let's let's take a few minutes and and touch more about 2024. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons that we're that we're here is to talk about what it is that God's saying. And um, I, I think you kind of touched the surface there, but I'd like to go a little bit a little bit deeper because I know that the, I know it's there. Okay, what one, one of the devil's primary manifestations? In other words, if you look at the essence of darkness and what is being transmitted from darkness. One of the primary transmissions of darkness is chaos. And the reason one of the primary transmissions of darkness uh, is chaos, John, is because chaos breaks everything down and its fruit is destruction. Mm. And so you look right now at what has happened in the earth and you can really describe it as chaos. So you look, for example, where, where a lot of this quick trajectory began to fall. It really was, and this is a bit of a controversial statement, but it's true. When we, when we accepted the pill, the birth control pill, as something that was just like, I can say for myself, when I, I was a believer when I got married and my wife was on the pill, we didn't even think anything about it, mm. to be honest with you. Now I definitely would. But at the time, it was just like it was such a mainstream you know, mindset, yeah, you know, you, you take the pill that we just didn't really think it through. But when I think about it now and think about what is the result of such an easy way to be able to have sexual relations, but number one, it, it, it takes sanctity out of sex because mm -hmm. so many people, you know, they take the pill, they're not married, and it's just a way for them to enjoy sex without the risk of becoming pregnant. 
and and birth control began really to take sanctity out of out of sex and it began mm-hmm. to um diminish the sanctity of human life that eventually led not only to a sexual um revolution downward where people just began to enjoy sex as part of enjoyment rather than looking at it as something sacred that was preserved for marriage, which threw everything out of, I mean, that's caused such havoc in society, such mm-hmm. a destruction in families and people's identity. You know, not people got married. First thing they're doing, they're comparing themselves to their spouse's previous sexual partners. Mm-hmm. You know, was I as uh, enjoyable, forgive me, you know, as, as him or her, you know, it just has created such insecurity and breakdown in relationship and marriage and society. From there, it spiraled into um, abortion. You know, if we could take the pill, what about abortion? That just further separated people in their conscience from the value of human life. And when men's conscience gets seared, it's seared to God and to mm. the Holy Spirit. So abortion pl- has played a huge role in severing the population from the witness of the Holy Spirit in their life. And then we had the introduction of the internet. And obviously, I mean, it's an unbelievable blessing. I mean, like something, you know, is broken. You don't know how to operate something. What do you do? You go on Google, you can figure out almost anything. Yeah. Unbelievable. But on the other hand, how much of our psyche and our soul no longer is dwelling at peace inside us. We're connected to the pseudo reality of cyberspace. You know, we wake up in the morning. The first thing we do, you know, we look at our phones, we get on the Internet, you know, all day long, the phone's going off. You know, it's taken people out of the ability to be sensitive to what's going on inside them. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's inner witness who is inside us because we're too connected to something outside us. And And then the same demon that took us out of ourselves by drawing us into the cyber reality through Internet space. That same demon has now reprogrammed people's minds so that they believe a lie because they've been programmed by disinformation and misinformation that's come to them through the Internet. So all this is producing mass chaos Mm. and it's going to blow up. And that's where we're going. Wow. So what do we as believers do about that? As we're wrapping this up, what do we do? What's our action that we can start yeah. taking? Thank you, my friend. Well, let me answer that question two ways. First, I'm going to answer it in a prophetic experience that I had, and then I'm going to answer it through the word. So the first thing I would say was um, sometime back, we had a movement that you and I, I think spoke of. It was called Taking the Rainbow Back. Right after that movement culminated with a, with a, with a weekend that we had planned on July 28th, I believe was the date. I, I, I was kind of lost a little bit after that because I've been so invested in this for months. And now we just kind of completed the lap. We completed the circle. Everything that we had planned to do with this Taking the Rainbow Back strategy was completed. And so I came down to my prayer room one morning and I laid down on my couch there and I, and I put some beautiful worship music on. And I was, as I was laying in my couch, I went into like a dreamlike trance state. And in this dreamlike trance state, an angel walks into my prayer room. Mm -hmm. Now the angel did not look like any other angel that I heard described before. He was like an average looking man in height, in height. He was a black man. He had black skin, like an African man's skin. He was dressed completely in green. And it, it wasn't like a pants and shirt. It looked more like a riding hood type of, a, a, hmm. of an outfit. And he had a, a green hoodie on. And he came down to where I was laying on my couch. And right where I'm laying on my couch, there's a, there's a, there's a coffee table there. And the angel took this Bible and the Bible that he, that, he, that he was carrying was also clothed in green. Yeah. So the angel took the Bible. He, he laid it on my coffee table right next to where I was you know, sleeping, dreaming in this translite vision state. And he then covered it up really daintily in that bi- green Bible cover. I mean, it was already on there, but he you know, just straightened it out, you know, like he'd straighten out sheets on a bed, make sure it was all covered real daintily. And then the experience was over and I woke up. I was like, man, that, I mean, and I could hear the music playing from, you know, from my, from, you know, as you came into my room and it was just like, I was being ministered to with, by such incredible beauty hmm. from the Lord. 
I mean, it was such a beautiful, marked experience. And so I woke up and I just like, wow. And I was so thankful mm -hmm. that the Lord had just spoke to me because remember, I was feeling kind of lost. Like, what do I do next? And the Lord was telling me the way I, the way I intuited what just happened was the Lord was telling me, just stay in my word. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know about what project is next. You don't need to know what to do next. You don't need to be concerned about anything right now. I just want you to focus on one thing. I just want you to stay in my word. Remember, the angel took the Bible, laid yeah. it really daintily on my thing. So your answer, the question to the answer, what do we do? The first thing that I'd like to just state is we need to stay and become even more grounded in God's word. And I want to close just by saying this, and then we can continue on here. But, you know, Paul said that bodily discipline is profitable. But he said spiritual discipline is even more profitable. And that's something today that I don't think is stressed enough, that we need to be spiritually disciplined to be able to be doing certain um, things in our life that will help us grow in the Lord and having a disciplined regimen of reading the scriptures, even if it's just a chapter a day from the old and a chapter a day from the new is, you know, and, and reading a little bit of scripture or Bible study or devotional before you go to bed. I mean, this is our lifeline. The word of God is what we live by. So the first thing I'd say is people need to get into God's word, stay in God's word, and they need to be, we need to be disciplined by it, about it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Get in God's word and stay in his word. I mean, it's as simple as that. And as the Bible talks about in even the book of Revelation, as we read it, there is a blessing with that. And so as we're looking at the end times uh, as, that are approaching fast, uh, faster and faster every day, there is a blessing that comes from spending time in the word of God and be, in studying to show yourself approved but to study and to stay in the word of God.